A new vaccine technology is giving people hope for how to treat cancer as well as COVID-19. It's one of the things I learned this week in my reporting. And here's the big headline. It is completely fact-based to be both hopeful and skeptical about this new science. What we're gonna be talking about is mRNA vaccine technology. So what is that? Here's just the very basics of it. In a traditional vaccine, we use the virus itself. So a live virus, a dead virus, a weakened part of a virus, but the virus. And we give that virus to our body, usually through a shot. I'm gonna give myself a shot. <laughs> and then our body says, well, wait, what is that? And develops immunity against it. mRNA technology does not use any of the virus at all. So instead, scientists are harnessing the unique genetic sequence of a virus. Just like us, every virus is a little bit different. And what scientists can do is they can isolate the unique viral protein that every virus has. They then get the blueprint of that protein and give it to us so our body can produce it. And once our body produces it, our body understands, hey, actually, I need to check that out. So instead of actually giving us a little bit of a virus, they're giving us the directions on how to make a unique identifier of the virus. I know, this is enough to make your head explode and I've had to say this to myself many, many times to really understand what this technology is all about. I've never ever heard about it until we are handling a global pandemic. Here's maybe a, a simpler way to think about it. Let's say there's a criminal on the loose in your community and that criminal always wears a certain hat. And so you're out and about and you see someone with that hat and an alarm goes up. That's what we're doing for the body. We're not giving the body the actual criminal, the virus. We're giving the body an identifier, a way to recognize the virus. So if the body ever encounters that criminal out in the wild, the body knows what to do. So why are we even talking about this now? Well, the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine, the very first COVID-19 vaccine approved for emergency use authorization in the United States, used this sort of science to develop the vaccine. And the Moderna vaccine that the FDA is also considering for emergency use authorization uses this science as well. One of the first things I've learned in my reporting on this vaccine technology, and quite frankly, any vaccine technology that's out there to combat COVID, is that health officials, scientists, doctors, they're not looking at this as a way to cure COVID. They're looking at it as a way to reduce the severity of illness in communities. So it's not being viewed as a panacea, a cure-all to get rid of COVID entirely. It's being looked at as a piece of the puzzle overall. And if we understand the framework for that, then the following makes a little bit more sense. That's especially important when you hear that this mRNA vaccine technology has never been approved for human use, which it hasn't. That said, I've gained a better understanding for just how extensively it's been studied over the years. So mRNA vaccine technology has been studied going back to the 1970s, and it's been studied on all sorts of different viruses, from MERS to SARS to rabies, and also for cancer. The whole thinking is give the body more information, good, precise information, and equip the body to ward off against anything that will do the body harm. Some of these studies have been really promising. And the concern over whether or not these vaccines receive approval hasn't necessarily been about safety. It's about immunity and whether or not they are delivering the lasting immunity that really makes them worthwhile. Unfortunately, we're in a very special position to be able to really test out this vaccine technology. And that's because of the level of infection that's happening around the world. In order to test out a vaccine, what's typically done is that you have some people that receive a vaccine as part of a study, and then they're released into their communities where for scientists, they wanna see a certain level of infection in the community to anticipate whether or not their subjects are actually going to be exposed to the very virus that they're trying to develop a vaccine to fight. We never wanna see anyone sick. We never wanna see anyone die. But the level of infection is actually providing an opportunity to test out whether these vaccines, this particular mRNA vaccine technology and others will really be effective. So while we don't know the total immunity right now, the thinking is in the next few months, we'll have a better idea of just how effective these new vaccines are. So this is a point I needed a little bit of clarity on. Are we part of a grand experiment? In some ways we are. 
there's enough in the preliminary studies on these vaccines where scientists and health officials think that the risk is low and the benefit great enough to grant them emergency use authorization. But there are no long-term studies on using these type of vaccines. So if you're looking for them, they don't exist. And we don't know for specific groups as well. How does this vaccine work in pregnant women or those with autoimmune disease or in certain age groups? We don't have any of that information yet. The hope is that we will someday. So let's bring it full circle, hope and skepticism. What you should know is that this is sort of like building a house, right? There's enough for scientists and health officials to look at this new vaccine technology and say, hey, you know what, we have a pretty good foundation. We have good preliminary research from past decades of looking at this sort of technology. We have good initial research for the studies on its usage against COVID-19 but we don't have all of our walls up quite yet. We don't have the long-term information that of course every scientist, health official, doctor wants. And of course all of us want as well. It's a reminder that we're very much in the middle of a developing story. And that's why we can balance hope for innovation as well as skepticism waiting for more information to come. Regardless, we're at a very critical crossroad. And that's why I wanted to mark this particular science for us. Questions, comments, let me know. And as always more on smarternews.com.